Hi, I'm Dan with Family Home Theater, and this video is about a specific subset of home theater screens called Constant Image Height Screens. Today's video is sponsored by Nobody. So what is a Constant Image Height Screen? Well, if you go to the commercial theater, they have Constant Image Height Screens. Maybe you've noticed you're sitting there, you're watching the little slides with the little trivia and stuff on them and the, all the annoying advertisements and the 28 previews they have to show you before the actual movie. And then the movie starts and you notice that the curtains on the side start to widen. That's because that is a constant image height screen. They're always going to fill the screen vertically. Well, first, let me give you an example of what a 16 by 9 fixed frame would be. Right now my screen is in a 16 by 9 format. That means for 16 units across, you have 9 units high. 16 by 9, standard high definition television picture format. So let's say you're watching like normal television content. Well, that picture is going to fill up the entire screen. Well, what if you watch something like Lord of the Rings? Well, you're going to end up with black letterbox bars on the top and bottom of the image. So how can you fix this letterbox issue? Well, you can either just live with it, with the black bars on top and bottom of the screen, but I personally don't like that because my movie content that is supposed to be more cinematic and immersive is smaller than Wheel of Fortune. So another thing you can do is stretch the image vertically, but that's... Alright, I did this in my other home theater projector screen video, and a lot of people commented that I gave them a heart attack when I did this. So I'm going to warn you, there's going to be a jump scare coming up in a few seconds here, right? So there's going to be a jump scare. Don't be afraid. Expect it. Here it comes. But if you were to stretch a letterbox image to fit the entire height of a 16x9 screen, that would be... <coughs> there, see? I don't want to get any comments that I gave anyone a heart attack because I told you to expect that. Okay, so what is a constant image height screen and how does this solve our problems? Well, this is a constant image height screen. This is a fixed 2.35 to 1 theater, home theater screen that has masking panels on the side so that if I'm watching 16 by 9 content, I close the panels down and I have a nicely framed 16 by 9 image. If I'm watching 2.35 to 1 content, I open them up or sometimes I just take them off completely and have the widest possible image I can. And this is a 10 foot wide screen. So this video is going to go over what you need in order to have a constant image height screen. And there's special considerations for the projector that you get if you want to run a constant image height setup because not all projectors can do a constant image height setup. Now first let me address some questions or comments I got on my other projector screen video about constant image height. Someone asked, can I mask for constant image width? What constant image width would be is if you had a screen that is this wide and you just mask the top and bottom when you're watching a 16 by 9 movie. Well, you can do that. It's a little tougher to mask top and bottom, especially if you're doing motorized, but it can be done. I've seen people on forums who have done it. But you still have the issue where Lord of the Rings looks less impactful than Wheel of Fortune. Another comment I've gotten is, well, how about just having a really big 16 by 9 screen? Well, what that would look like is something like this. So you can have a screen like that, but it's going to be a screen that's going to pretty much stretch all, almost all the way from the floor to the ceiling. Now, if you have room in your room that you can do that, sure, go ahead and do that. But still, you have the problem where... Lord of the Rings is less impactful than The Price is Right. So there's the screen size considerations, but let's talk about what you need in terms of a projector to pull off constant image height. One is through using the zoom of your projector, and the other is through using a special anamorphic lens. Now I'll tell you up front that using the zoom of your projector is by far the cheaper option, because good anamorphic lenses are expensive. But if you can afford it, that's great. Go ahead and skip ahead to that portion of the video. But for the rest of us, using the zoom of our projector is going to have to suffice. So how much zoom do you need on a projector in order to pull off a constant image height screen? The answer is you need a 1.32x zoom lens, minimum. Now, I'm going to warn you, if you get a projector that has exactly 1.32 times zoom, 
and you already have the screen, you're going to have to be very careful about mounting that projector because you're not going to have any wiggle room between your 16 by 9 image and your 2.35 to 1 image. You'll have to get the placement of your projector exactly right in terms of how far it is from the screen. But if you get a projector that has 1.5x or 2x zoom, you're going to have a lot more flexibility on how far you have to place the projector from the screen. That's helpful for people who don't have adjustable joists in their ceiling. Now, if you don't have a screen yet, you can just get the projector, mount it where you want it, and then see what your zoom extremes are, and then make or order your screen based off of that. But still, if your zoom is only 1.32x, you're limited to one exact screen size. So make sure to use a projector calculator like the one at projectorcentral.com. I'm not affiliated with them, I'm just that you got a good calculator, it works. Go ahead and use that calculator and you'll see exactly what your screen size limitations are. Now since you need zoom in order to pull off a constant image height screen, that's pretty much going to exclude any ultra short throw projector. So if you need to have a projector that's sitting right down there, you're not going to be able to do a constant image height screen because there aren't any projectors like that that have zoom that I am aware of. Now maybe if you have an adjustable table or something you can lower or raise the height of the projector that might be an option I haven't looked into that but in general you're going to want a traditional ceiling mounted front projector. Now another thing you want to look for when buying a projector if you want to do a constant image height screen is ideally you will want a projector with motorized zoom, motorized lens shift, motorized focus, and lens memory. Now to be clear, you can do constant image height without that. In fact, the projector I have does not have low motorized zoom, lens shift, or focus. What I have to do every time I watch a letterbox movie is I have to go back there, climb up on top of a chair, adjust a mounting screw on the front of my projector to tilt the entire image up, zoom the image out, adjust the focus a little bit, and then I'm good. Then when I go back to regular content, I gotta go back over there, try to adjust the projector in the dark, or, and maybe not get it quite right, have to do it a couple times, but it can be done. So you can do it with an inexpensive projector that does have at least 1.32 times zoom, even if it doesn't have lens shift, lens memory, all that kind of stuff. But ideally, you are going to want these features. What these motorized features do, and specifically lens memory, is using your remote, you can adjust the projector zoom and focus and lens shift so that when you watch content that is in a different format, you can adjust it without having to jump up on a ladder or something to adjust your projector. But beware, because not all projectors that have motorized lens shift, zoom, and focus have, they don't all have lens memory. For example, the lower end Sony 4K projector, it does have motorized lens shift, motorized zoom, motorized focus. It does not have lens memory. They reserve that for their more expensive next line up because, hey, they gotta have some reason for you to pay the extra money for that. But there are other projectors, such as ones made by JVC and Epson, that do have lens memory. And for example, the JVC NX5 has lens memory, and their new laser line of projectors, they all have lens memory. Also, the Epson 5050, 6050, I'm not sure about the 4050 series. I'll look that up. Yes? No? Yes. So that's something you want to look for when buying a projector if you want to do constant image height. There are high-end projectors, such as this BenQ HT9060, that doesn't have motorized zoom or lens shift for some reason. Even though it's a $10,000 projector, it has manual zoom and manual lens shift. And therefore, by extension, it doesn't have lens memory. Why they would omit such a feature when projectors that cost $3,000 do... Now the zoom method of doing constant image height isn't the best per se method of doing it, but it's definitely the cheapest way of doing it. What you will experience if you're doing the zoom method is if you have a 1080p projector and you're zooming it out so the image is bigger, depending on your seating distance, you might start seeing some of the pixel structure. But as long as you get a 4K projector or even a wobulated simulated 4K projector, you can get away with zooming out the image without really losing too much detail. 
but one thing you are going to lose is brightness. Now, it doesn't bother me. I don't really notice that I have less brightness when I'm zoomed out, but if you're at the extremes of your projector's capabilities, that could be something to consider is that this image is not going to be as bright when it's zoomed out. If you want to do constant image height the best way possible, then you're going to need an anamorphic lens, which is expensive. Now some advantages of the lens on the projector side is your projector doesn't need to have lens memory or anything like that in order to support constant image height if you're using a lens. One thing that you do need is a projector that will do anamorphic stretch. Remember that evil thing I talked about earlier where you stretch the image to fill the entire top and bottom of the screen? Well, that's actually not evil here because what you would do with an anamorphic lens is you would stretch the image to fit the entire 16 by 9 frame and then the lens is going to stretch the image out so that you have proper geometry in the image. Now the one biggest advantage of a now the biggest advantage of using a lens for a constant image height system is you're using the full panel resolution of your projector. So when you're watching widescreen content, you're going to have more apparent resolution and your image is going to look maybe a little bit even better than when it's not anamorphic content. Another big advantage is since you're using the entire display chip inside your projector, you're getting the full brightness capabilities of your projector. Because instead of wasting light projecting black bars on the top and bottom of the image that you would zoom out and not see anyway, you're actually using what would normally project those black bars to project image content and the lens is just stretching it out so that you have a little bit of a brighter image if you're using an anamorphic lens. But again, anamorphic lenses are expensive. So is it worth it to you? Well, if money is no object for you, then sure. But if you're on a budget like a lot of us, then you're probably going to want to compare or at least uh, audition a projector in your theater or maybe go out and see one and see if you can live with the lower apparent resolution. But honestly, with a 4K projector, you're not really going to see pixel structure unless you're sitting way too close to the screen anyway. By way too close, I mean like, you know, that close. Now, another consideration for constant image height screens is your speaker placement. When you have a screen this big, you also want to have big theater sound. Well, with a screen this big, you can't really have tower speakers off on the sides of the speakers because they're going to be too close to the wall, it's going to cause problems, and you're also going to have your center speaker that's got to be somewhere down there. Really, the ideal setup for a constant image height screen is to have one that's acoustically transparent. This is an acoustically transparent screen. It is made out of spandex. They also make professional screens that are also acoustically transparent. Like Stuart Film Screen has their Microperf, High Definition, Firehawk, really nice projector screen. But, uh, well, for me, that's not a viable option because I still have young kids. That's what that is. And this screen is about $35 in material to replace. If I had a acoustically transparent Stuart Film Screen 130 inch Microperf, it would cost me probably easily $3,000 to replace something like that. So not getting something like that until I don't have kids. But you can do constant image height without an acoustically transparent screen. Maybe you're using bookshelf speakers. Maybe your significant other has limited you to using those tiny little cube speakers. Maybe you're one of those people that thinks Bose actually does make nice speakers. But for serious home theater enthusiasts, Good tower, maybe bookshelf speakers is what we're using. That's, an, that's, a, that, that's a speaker video. Go watch the speaker video if you want to hear more about speakers. But anyhow, now one other issue with constant image height screens that I've been asked about several times in the comment section of some of my videos is what about movies with variable aspect ratios? Well, what is that? that what that is is a movie that was recorded for viewing on IMAX. Now for movies like that, I know several of the Batman movies have done this, uh, First Man did this for the end of their movie, but some movies have taken two IMAX presentations. So when it's in an IMAX theater, it is in the huge 16 by 9 format and their huge screen size. Now in the regular theaters, when they show it in a theater that is not an IMAX theater, 
it is masked off so that the top and bottom of the image are chopped off and the entire presentation is in a letterbox format. However, when they do the transfer to Blu-ray or UHD Blu-ray, what they're doing is when it is an IMAX scene, they're showing you a 16 by 9 image. And when it's a scene that's not an IMAX scene, it is a letterboxed image. And so as you're watching a movie, you might notice that some scenes you get the full 16 by 9 frame and some scenes you have a letterboxed image. So what do you do with that in the home theater if you're running a constant image height setup? Well, there was a day when the purists were like, you want to watch it in the aspect ratio that the director intended. Well, now we have this issue where, well, did the director intend the IMAX presentation that's a 16 by 9 frame, or did he intend the widescreen format? Well, for me personally, I would just put it in the widescreen format, and if you have a dark top and bottom, you're not going to notice it too much. You might. Some projectors do have a masking feature, especially if they have lens memory. They'll have a, a, a digital masking feature where it will automatically crop off the top and bottom of an image if it's in a widescreen format. Or you can do a mask manually, maybe put something in front of your lens, but that kind of defeats the purpose of doing lens memory. But that is one issue if you're running a constant image height setup is that if a movie's a variable refresh rate, then it's going to be changing. You'll have to do something about that. You don't have to do something about it. You can just live with it spilling off the top and bottom of the screen occasionally. But honestly, when the directors do film these movies for IMAX, they know that the movie is also going to be shown on a lot of non-IMAX screens that are going to be in the letterbox format. And so all the important stuff that's on the screen is going to be within that 2.35 to 1 framing. So you're not losing too much by not having the full image. Now, if you want, you can run it in a 16 by 9 format. The movie's going to be smaller that way, and you'll just you'll have the letterboxes sometimes, and you'll have the full frame screen. Hopefully, they get away with that. Some people, some directors, I think, will mask it off for the home release. The whole I don't know, but yeah, that that's an annoying thing that they're doing now because IMAX theaters are all their age now. So there it is. That's what constant image height home screener screens are. What they are what you need projector-wise or lens-wise and able to run a constant image height setup. So I have a whole bunch of other videos, they're older videos, but they're still applicable today because, hey, not much of the basics have changed, but I'll probably start making, making more specific videos that I'll kind of zoom in on certain aspects of home theater that are maybe a bit more specific than general home theater videos. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Here's some other videos that you can watch. Um, thanks for watching, have a great day. Oh yeah. Like, subscribe, and I don't know if they're ever going to enable my super thanks, but hey, there's hopefully that one day.